I'm going to speak a little bit about one of the very first wildflowers you will see in the spring, and that's coltsfoot, or Tussilago fafara. Coltsfoot is an interesting plant. It's oftentimes confused for dandelions because their sunny yellow flowers come up early in the spring. They are one of the earliest plants to flower in the spring. The noticeable difference though between coltsfoot and dandelion is the lack of any spring leaves and they have an alien like thick flower stem with numerous reddish scales. This low growing perennial plant has large heart shaped leaves with a velvety underside that will emerge in late spring and early summer after the flower has gone to seed. Coltsfoot is a member of the aster family. It's a perennial with large basal leaves and scaly purplish stems. The yellow flowers are about one inch in diameter and appear in early spring and then they're followed by the emergence of leaves later in the season. The leaves also have a long stem and are broadly heart shaped with shallow lobes and coarsely toothed margin. The leaf undersides are velvety and white. If you want to grow coltsfoot in your pollinator garden, coltsfoot is a very hardy perennial and it will grow in almost any condition. The ideal growing conditions are moist clay soil, open disturbed areas and like cool shady locations. But the plants can also grow in full sun and other types of soil. The large unique leaves are not as susceptible to insect attacks as many other large leaved garden plants. So they're a hardy alternative for growing as an ornamental ground cover and to add interest in the garden. The plants have an extensive root system and are used to stabilize banks for erosion control. So if you have an area where you need to control erosion, you could plant colt's foot there. Because it is native to Europe and is an extremely hardy spreading both through creeping rhizomes and seeds, cutting off the flower heads before they go to seed is a good idea. And also be sure to dig up any stray plants and plant them in areas that won't spread through neighboring properties as they do tend to spread. And they will work very well for container gardening. The pollinators that you'll find enjoying colt's foot are bees, hoverflies, houseflies, and beetles. Now, a little caution before I get to the edible uses. This is your responsibility to ensure that you can identify a plant correctly and you use that plant at your own risk. But there are some edible uses for colt's foot. Colt's foot leaves and flowers are said to be edible. With a pleasant anise taste, they can be tossed into salads to add an aromatic flavor. The flowers can be added to honey to make a cough remedy or to sweeten tea. Dried flowers can be added to dishes such as pancakes and fritters. And young leaves can be eaten raw or cooked. They can be used in salads or added to soups. And an aromatic tea can be made from the fresh or dried leaves and flowers and it has a licorice-like flavor. Dried or burnt leaves can also be used as a salt substitute. Coltsfoot also has a history of medicinal uses. The early European settlers brought coltsfoot to use as a herbal remedy. It's said to ease asthma attacks and treat other lung and throat ailments. The name Tussilago means cough dispeller. It was used as a pulmonary tonic and curative against emphysema, chronic bronchitis, and even whooping cough. It's said to be more effective when used in combination with licorice, thyme, and wild cherry. A bitter tonic and diaphoretic preparation can be obtained from the root. Colt's foot has been used as a replacement for tobacco as well. And a poultice of the flowers is said to have a soothing effect on a wide range of skin disorders, including eczema, ulcers, sores, bites, and inflammation. Now the plant does come with some of its hazards, so you make sure you want to research any of this before you decide to use Colt's foot as a herbal remedy or as an edible, because the plant contains traces of liver affecting alkaloids that can be potentially toxic in large doses. The flower stems contain higher levels of these alkaloids, but are largely destroyed when the plant is boiled to make a decoction. When you're ready to harvest Colt's foot, you can harvest the flowers and stems at their peak of blooming in early spring. The leaves tend to be harvested later in the spring when they're fully grown. It's actually said that it's best to pick the leaves with some black spots on them because the oils are surfacing to the top.
Coltsfoot also has other uses. The large velvety leaves make an excellent emergency toilet paper, and because of the soft down on the underside, the leaves have been used as a stuffing material for crafts and household goods. The leaves and flowers can also be dried for crafts and arrangements. The leaves are a valuable addition to your compost for making compost tea to feed your garden plants. A colt's foot fertilizer is very high in nitrogen and potassium, which will stimulate leafy growth and promote stronger plants. So, when you think you see a dandelion in early spring, just take a closer look. It may be colt's foot, which is a beautiful large leaf perennial with unique characteristics and many benefits. And be sure to check out my favorite gardening sources for this type of information, which is Plants for a Future and Go Botany.